And I want to know, I repeat my question, who has the authority to issue fatwas? Is it Sheikh Karadawi, who you sometimes very much uh, express the respectful, who on Al Jazeera gives advice on all kinds of things, some of them innocuous, sexual matters and so forth, doctrinal rulings, sometimes upon the legitimacy or otherwise of suicide bombing, if directed at Israelis, not just Jews, of course, but I know, no, we draw the distinction. On the other hand, Hamas, which does the suicide bombing, doesn't draw the distinction. If I can't issue a fatwa against Hamas, if I'm a Muslim, if there's no one who will and they won't, surely someone could say, we don't think Hamas should have on its website and manifesto the reproduction of the protocols of the elders of Zion a Christian fascist fabrication that is one of the warrants for the Nazi exterminationist solution. I mean, surely that's a question for the UN Anti-Racism Committee on a spare day. Or, or since that spare day never seems to come, for some Muslim authority to say, no brothers, don't, don't do that. It doesn't come, it doesn't happen. Look on the website, it's still there. Now, you, you would do better, I think, Professor, if you identified yourself as a member of a very small and critical and endangered minority. <laughs> Someone who really is against all this and will say so and will also decry the fact that the religion itself can't seem to throw it off. But you seem to have that a little bit both ways. Now... I'm going to have to very well. So yes, so then my, my, my closing statement is this. If you want diversity, as much as the professor does, as much as I'm sure many people here do, religious diversity, cultural diversity, um, what you need for it is this. You need a secular state with a godless constitution like this one. To, to speak as you did of the Ottoman Empire as a place where there were not just Muslims but Christians and Jews is either not to know yourself or to expect others to have forgotten or not to know what it meant to be a non-Muslim under the caliphate or under any similar theocratic Muslim authority to this day. No, what we need, what, secularism is the only guarantee of religious freedom and yours and that of every other Muslim we will defend but you won't be surprised that we have some questions for you in the meanwhile. Thank you. No, I think it's, it's, it's true. If we look at what is happening now in the Muslim majority countries as well as in the West, that there is something that we can call an, a crisis of authority. In the book Radical Reform, I'm tackling this from many viewpoints and not only from you know, political discussion. It's really even in our way to deal with sciences, human sciences, ethics, we have this problem. Uh, you know, when you don't know how to manage diversity, it ends up with division and not knowing who is leading. And this is the way. We don't have a church, so we have diversity in Islam. So we have to know how to manage this, and it's problematic. And I would say that if you look today at what is happening, even though we have this crisis, if you look today at what is happening around the world, you will see that we have many councils still the mainstream is not promoting you know, violence and, and extremist views. The mainstream is promoting you know, what is said, for example, about Western Muslims or Muslims living in Muslim majority countries is about transparency, no corruption, democratization. This is the mainstream that is coming. Now we have voices. And you speak about Yusuf al-Qardawi, and you were saying that I was uh, a support, one of uh, supporters of, of him. You know, I have one position in every one and everybody I'm dealing with, in history, in the past, and as is in the present. I read what is said, and I try to be selective. So, for example, on that point, killing, I said no, I disagree. On identity, and when he once was very harsh with me saying, no, we have one identity, and this is Islamic, I said, no, we have multiple identity. I'm Swiss by nationality, Egyptian by memory, Muslim by religion, European by culture. These are my identities. He didn't agree. So I talk to people, but I know that on this, for example, in Israel, I disagree with him, but you cannot reduce 
Yusuf al-Qardawi in the world today to this position. Mm -hmm. Because he had many other positions on women, on uh, the, 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 the society, on democracy. He is promoting something which is, he called democracy in the Muslim majority country, that you have to consider by saying, okay, on this we disagree, and on that we need to have a critical debate. You cannot just, because one position, we don't like one position, we remove the people from the, 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 the landscape. No, they are part of the landscape and they are heard in the Muslim majority countries. Mm -hmm. So this is my position on that. Um, well, I'm certainly not going to criticize Islam for not having a poke. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, it, it would be your vis-a-vis your -vis in this discussion was horribly in error in any case in that Christianity never had only one pope and still doesn't. I mean, there were several Catholic claimants to the papacy at different times, just among Roman Catholics. But t today, I mentioned one of them, the pope of the Coptic uh, Christians based in Cairo. Uh, the, the Eastern Orthodox don't call their leader the pope. They call him the patriarch. But the Christian world is full of pope types, uh, <laughs> usually anathematizing one another. The, the Pope is just the word that innocent Americans use for the man who claims to be the leader of the Roman Catholics. So I don't think it's possible, in fact, to have a, a moral authority within religion, because I think the two things are so sharply divorced. But this doesn't, this doesn't lead to just uh, chaos, because, and it certainly doesn't lead to the dictatorship of minorities or, or, or extremists. In, I'll give you two examples quickly. In the case of the moral blackmail of Denmark that was backed up by a physical threat to destroy its economy and, and burn out its embassies across the world. Well-coordinated attack of sabotage against a small European democracy. The organizing group was a thing called the OIC, the Organization of the Islamic Congress. It groups all the Muslim countries in the world. It's an increasingly powerful lobby at the United Nations. Hopes to pass an international resolution forbidding all criticism of religion, all forms of blasphemy and profanity. Every ambassador of those countries in Copenhagen went to Mr. Rasmussen, the Prime Minister of Denmark, and told him, under the threat of violence, he should change his law so as to allow, as to allow him to determine what went into the Danish newspapers. And when he said he couldn't do that, things got a lot worse. Now, that's the ambassador of Egypt and the ambassador of Turkey and the ambassador of, of Algeria, important countries, in the case of Egypt, containing an enormous Christian population, coming to you as if they spoke for a religion. Either this claim is true or it is not. It's self-evidently not true, but it is certainly made. Don't let's be in any doubt about it. And don't ha let's have any doubt that it means to extend its influence over the people who are sitting in this hall. Second, very quick, the fatwa against Salman Rushdie in other words, the offer of money to suborn murder for the crime of writing a work of fiction in his own name by the spiritual leader of Shia Islam, that's what the fatwa meant then, means now, was after the murder of many people associated or not with the publication of the book, repudiated ostensibly by the Iranian government after long pressure and lobbying at the United Nations about 10 years ago, I think that was. But I've been since then, I've had the pleasure of going to Friday prayers at Tehran University, twice, to hear the sermon. And on both occasions, there were banners and slogans saying that the, the imam's holy sentence against Salman Rushdie will never die. It hasn't died with the imam. Khomeini's death warrant will always be carried out. Not, I think, a very good use of the premises of a university. I can't speak for whether it's a good occasion for Friday prayers or not. Well, it brings me to a second point. You see, there's something shady involved here. Some people say that Islam and Islamists give themselves permission to lie to non-believers. Sounds like the sort of vulgar, paranoid thing that an Islamophobe would go around saying, doesn't it? Well, it's very easy to disprove, except that it hasn't been, as that example will just illustrate. And these are not minor threats. These are threats to the very core of what we believe uh, is the essential thing for a society, which is the ability to ask questions, to read the books we choose, to pursue unfettered investigations. And these are flatly negated by the, by the claims of a religion that says it is the answer to everything. Can I, can I respond to this? Because yes. really, I think, I think that uh, 
no. is the, the Takia question? No, 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 no. The Takia no. question is, uh, is uh, no. The point is, on on the cartoon issue, the way you are translating things is problematic. Let me just come to some of the facts here very quickly. The first thing is that it happened in, in October that the cartoon were published. Between October till January, nothing happened. And I met the Muslim organizations in Denmark, and I told them, and many were of the opinion, don't react. The ambassadors of uh, Muslim majority countries and Arab countries mainly asked the prime minister to meet with them. He refused. And my position that he made, a, he made a mistake here because he should have met them, telling them, I have no say in this. It has to do with freedom of media. This is not of my business. He didn't do this. They took it as humiliation. They went back. They bought the ah. tickets. No, no, but look. Easily. No, no, let, okay. no, 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 let me finish because we will come to the point here. Humiliation. They went back and they bought the ticket of a, a, a group of Muslims, among them Muslim leaders in Denmark, to go to Muslim-majority countries to just present what was done. Tell me, Egypt is ruled by Islam? Is it Islam which is used there? Mubarak is a secular president, isn't it? Syria? is a Muslim leader or is a secular state. All the main societies where the government used this, because you know what happened, is it's easier to use the people to tell them against the West you can demonstrate, but not against the government, which is an autocratic government. So it's not religion, it's political instrumentalization of popular emotions against the West just to make it a religious issue. You cannot just avoid talking about political instrumentalization of countries where there is no democracy. And these countries are not Islamist countries, they are secular autocratic countries. On your, third, a, on your you, third point, you know I can't what? possibly disagree with you. Of course, there's a great deal of opportunism and demagogy, and I'm certain hypocrisy as well. And in fact, I, have, I, will, I will say that I've heard you and seen you saying that before, and I agree. Um, I, don't, I don't think I would classify a country that hauls the Christian leader of its minority onto the TV to say, no, it's not possible. It could be, have been any... Exactly the same, to, political instrumentalization. One. No, to give you a trivial it's a, example. A, instrumentalization. No, I would not. Nor would I describe the Alawite regime. It's an Alawite sectarian regime, not a secular one, mm. that is funded by Tehran and is the funder of the murder gang Hezbollah as secular either. No, don't insult me. Not that it really hurts me that much. That's I don't feel Syria. humiliated or anything. All right, no, we're, going whereas, to, whereas we're going to take some whereas questions. Whereas apparently the leader of a proud country like Egypt when a demand to in, the, he makes you, to interfere in the internal affairs of Denmark no, is look, not met, feels... I'm humiliated. sorry, I just to end this discussion for me on my side, is the <laughs> only fact that you acknowledge the, that there is a political instrumentalization You're, of religion, and you say, I'm right, that's enough for me. This is exactly okay, what I mean. Good. Can we wind up? No, no. I, think, I actually think that... And no, you were, okay, earlier you were trying was, to tell me what Karl Marx said on the subject. Yeah. <laughs> that's your job. Valuable exchange. I think that was worth worth uh, <laughs> worth hearing. <laughs>